This time on the show, motion detecting lock screens for Linux using Motion and PageKite. NFC hacking on Android with an Arduino, and how secure is that 80 character password really? All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by the Ford Focus Electric. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And my name is Shannon Morse. And this is your weekly dose of Technolust. This is, this is going to be a fun one. Yes, it will. So Paul is gone. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. Paul. And speaking of Paul, happy birthday oh, yeah, to Mr. That's right. Paul Tobias. Welcome back, Paul. Paul! The camera guy! Paul! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> If yeah, you tuned into the Hack song. House, you know about that one. Yeah, that's um, old board there. Mean Jen. What? Yeah, is yeah, so Paul's, cool? Paul's, Paul's celebrating his birthday. Down and this in is Key West, Florida, this is getting be his drink on. One too, because uh, we had talked last week about how when you were setting up the PS3 controller to go ahead and work with uh, the yeah. Nexus 7 for gaming, you guys We'd were talking about like, maybe we can use this to Bluetooth with the, the cameras and get them to switch. Well, obviously, we're not doing that right now. Uh, that was the idea, actually, for this yeah, show we, we with Yeah, we kind of hired on our, our coworker to. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, so, Sarah. Thank thanks you. Thanks <laughs> for filling in, Sarah. So, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, and anyway, we're probably going to get Paul next week to come in and show us how he did that, because it was a pretty Ooh, sweet hack. That's a good idea. I just want to have to do it and this and all the things all yeah, the same time. Yeah, I don't think I could trust you doing all that. You probably forget one thing or another. Yeah, I've, I've been known to multiplex just a bit, but I usually do time division multiplexing. I'm not oh, right. so much with the code division. That's, of course, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, so what's going on this week? <laughs> well, I had this idea. Okay, so remember how uh, we've been talking lately about some people writing in saying, like, hey, I'd like to know if like a laptop has left my building. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're like, oh, a script to check your Wi-Fi, and if your Wi-Fi is gone, lock the screen. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I thought about was I kind of want like a proximity check. So if I do leave my PC, if I leave my laptop unattended, I want to know if anybody's come up and messed with Ooh, it. Remember the proximity the... alarm. My car has that. Oh, no way. <laughs> it starts beeping when somebody comes close to it. Hmm. See, I, I don't, yeah, maybe we could actually make it beep. I'm, I'm sure with a little bit more script foo. Beep, beep, beep. Don't touch me. <laughs> well, the idea was, you know, remember the cold boot attack, right? Yeah. Somebody would come up and like freeze your RAM and uh -huh. stuff. I don't have an accelerometer in here, so I don't know if it's been shaken, but I can use the webcam. Oh, get into it? that's cool. So check this out. I've got this tool here called Motion. Okay. Sudo apt get install Motion if you're on Debian. And quite simply, I'm going to run it tack n so it's not a daemon. You'll see what it does is activates my webcam. Okay. And it starts a streaming webcam server on port 8081 here. Ah. Give it just a second to come up. And as I move, you see as I'm moving, it's creating those <gasps> JPEG files. Oh. Oh, dude. Okay, let me close cool. that and pull up Nautilus here and go into motion folder. And as you can see there, there is, nice. there are photos so you have of me photos moving. photos of the person that. Ha ha! So I guess you could do this um, virtually, right? From like another machine somewhere. Yeah, I guess I could turn this on remotely. I you mean, you could turn it on remotely. Yeah. The idea is that motion, uh, this program motion, is really versatile, and what you can do with it, you can have it like you know do events when certain things happen. So you can right. have like email your phone with like a photo. It's like an if this then that. Basically. <laughs> nice. Um, you could have it like some people have it send all of its photos to Dropbox, as mm -hmm. you can see right here. I'm having it send all of my photos to just you Just know, server. a motion directory. Okay. But I wanted to tie this in with a tool that we had talked about last week, PageKite, and use oh. that to kind of create a temporary web server. Like this already has its built-in web server of uh, images. And here, I'll fire that up again. And let's go over to the web browser and go to localhost port 8081. And there you go. So <laughs> it's got a nice. built-in web server that's going to show the images. And so I figured, why don't we take advantage of that on port 8081 mm -hmm. and take advantage of the page cut stuff that we were talking about last week and then tie all of that in with a script that'll allow us to lock our machine. And every time we do, it just temporarily throws up page kite, throws up um, motion, motion, and then locks the screen. Awesome. So I guess I okay, should probably dive it. into how to get started with motion. Uh, like I said, sudo apt get install motion if you haven't already. And once you have motion set up, 
you need to go in and create yourself a motion.conf file. Okay. You'll notice that if you go to slash Etsy slash motion, there are already, a, it, there's a default conf file in there. You'll want to CP that motion.conf over to mm -hmm. like your home directory, so okay. tilde here. Yeah. I've already done that, so let me CD to tilde. You're also going to have to ch own uh, your username, in this case dk, mm -hmm. motion.conf, you know, just because uh, when you copy it from that Etsy motion folder, it's going to not have the permissions of your user, and you need it to have right. that. Yeah. So let's dive into actually modifying the, uh, the conf here to our liking. So I'll use nano motion.conf. And there's a couple of basic things that we want to, uh, to touch on here. First of all, uh, it needs a, you can, the first thing you want to do is it's by default, a da uh, the daemon is set to off. Okay. I want the daemon to be on, meaning when I start the program, don't be interactive, just kind of run in the background. Okay. The next thing is there's a PID file, and this is just a process ID file. You need to make sure that you touch this file, you create it. So for example, you could say touch motion.pid, if you could type right, and then you would have a file called motion.pid. Mm -hmm. And then you can say, hey, you know, point that at here. And so what it's going to okay. do is it's going to use that file to say, here's my process ID. Um, the other things that you're going to need to do, basically a lot of the stuff right out of the bat is going to be set up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things like by default it wants to use slash dev slash video zero. On Linux, it's you know dev video zero for your first webcam, mm -hmm. video one, video two, just like you have oh, okay. ETH yeah. and WLAN. Yeah. So if it also has the ability to use TV tuner cards. So if you're doing really? like a desktop PC, you might have a capture card. Uh -huh. In which case, it's slash dev slash tuner zero, and you just you know remove this semicolon, and that becomes your option. Okay. Um, and then there's a couple other things here for NTSC well, and other things that we don't need to change as far as the tuner is concerned. Uh, the width and the height, 320 by 240, so quarter VGA, nothing really high res, but we don't need a whole lot of resolution to see motion. Can you change it if you wanted to? You could up it to whatever your web webcam supports. And nowadays, I think most webcams that come with laptops are like 1.3 megapixel. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, what else is, uh, have some highlighted here that we need to change. Um, there's a bunch of brightness things that you might want to change depending on your particular environment and your webcam. I leave everything default and everything's been good so far. And then we actually get to our motion detection settings. The threshold is 1500. What that means is 1500 pixels have to have changed for it to uh, think that okay. motion has occurred. Okay. So this is one that you might need to tweak depending on where you are. You know, if you've got like a big... Today we're once again sponsored by our fine friends over at Ford and we've been talking about extending your Wi-Fi range, but now how about extending the range of the Ford Focus Electric? I got three tips for you. First off, utilize the brake coach. It's a feature that helps you optimize the car's regenerative brakes and a little graph on the instrument cluster actually shows you the amount of energy captured each time you stop. Then be sure to check out the budget consumption gauge. It's this little white line that you want to keep in the blue cup by gradually accelerating, coasting down hills and using the regenerative brakes and you're rewarded with little blue butterflies. Finally, check out the EcoRoot option when using the My Ford Touch Navigation. It'll let you choose from three routes, the fastest, the shortest, and the most fuel efficient. Of course, similar to a conventional gasoline engine car, doing things like turning off the air conditioner and the heater are gonna help maximize your range. Now, those are just some of the awesome tech features found in the Ford Focus Electric, and we wanna say thank you once again to Ford for sponsoring this episode of Hack5 and showing their commitment to technology. So this is one that you might need to tweak depending on where you are. You know, if you've got like a big fish tank behind your computer with fish swimming all yeah. over, then you that need to could it. set it off. Or if you have your, like, like your cats running around well, at home or something. There's nothing that's going to stop the cat from setting this off. And that's just <laughs> going to be good fun. Um, you can actually change the noise level if like you're in a low light environment. There's uh, a lot of possibility that you'll have grainy image, especially oh, yeah. if you have a like, you know, a VGA webcam. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, 32 by default, I haven't had to tweak it too much. And there's also a despeckling filter in here, which is really cool. It actually uses FFmpeg as a uh, dependency to do filtering to the images. And so um, it all automatically despeckles. So that's going to get rid of a lot of that film grain, film Great. grain. 
that it's you'll making, get off a cheap camera. Make my face look great right there. Yeah, see, I used to say in season one that don't worry about wearing makeup or anything because uh, <laughs> Xvid will take care of that. And yeah, now I, he uses makeup. And then I met the actually I'm not wearing it now. And Paul's <laughs> gonna yell at me because it's probably uber bright on my forehead. But um, but then I met the guy that that made Xvid, and I, I told him that. <laughs> and anyway, oh, <laughs> anyway, that's awesome. Um, here we go. So here we can actually uh, specify, you know, the text that we're going to put overlaying on the image. You might mm -hmm. want to do a date stamp or a time oh, okay, stamp. Yeah. It has a whole bunch of different, like, percent Y means a, uh, the year, year, percent M, the month, mm -hmm. the day. Monday. Things of that nature. You can put it in the bottom left, the bottom right. Well, there it is. The live web server. This is where it really gets fun. So uh -huh. by default, it wants to put the webcam port on port 8081. The quality is 50. That's not great, but whatever. Uh, webcam motion on and the thing that you have to change is by default this is set to only broadcast to local host and we want to set that to off meaning we want it to be accessible from more than just this machine oh, okay yeah so you can access the images from wherever my phone hopefully that's okay. the idea oh, nice. and then there's some other TCP stuff so basically there is another web server or there's a it's listening on another port on 8080 and if you enable this you can actually control some of the um, parameters of the webcam uh, or from, of motion from your phone or from whatever device it is that you're okay. connecting to this. So a little bit of remote administration. So I like to turn the local host off there so I can get to that and, and futz with it if I need to. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of this is all pretty self-explanatory. In here, I haven't really had to tweak much more. That You can get really in-depth with like SQL. You can tie yeah. it to databases and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, those are the tweaks that I've needed to do to get it set up to my liking. So I'm going to quit and not save changes, I didn't need to um, update anything there. Okay, cool. So with that all set, I figured why don't we tie it together with a script uh -huh. so that using PageKite page and Moj uh, uh, Motion, I can then see what, what's going on when I lock hey. my computer. So I've gone ahead and created a file here called motionlock.sh, and you can see it's just a bash script. Mm -hmm. So we begin with a shebang, and then I just say, hey, motion, and then, oops, supposed to say motion, dash C for the config file, that config. And then we use nohop. Nohop is going to fork this process so that this process is done in the background, kind of like as a daemon, and it's not going to halt ah, our script. Okay. Um, and it's going to issue pagekite. Whoops. It's going to issue pagekite here and tell pagekite to forward port 8081 to, again, hack5darren.pagekite.me. Okay. And then finally, we're going to issue GNOME screensaver command tac tac lock. And, that and that's going to lock the screen. Okay. In GNOME at least. I, I don't okay. know what the equivalent is for KDE. I'm not that cool. Um, there's also XFCE and all the other fun yeah. window managers. So, you know, you, you might have okay. to choose something different there. I'll save that. And then if you haven't done this before, this is something that, like, one of the first things I do with any new Ubuntu or whatever Linux, mm -hmm. I, uh, I go into keyboards. And under shortcuts, custom shortcuts, and I, I always add some for like you know gedit, calculator, nautilus, things like oh, that, yeah. so I can quickly navigate. Mm -hmm. I love it's it's because of the control alt t. Like I, yeah. if I have to click an icon to <laughs> do something, it drives me crazy. Um, I never click icons in Ubuntu anymore. Yeah, that's what's up. Wow, oh, kind of grows <laughs> it's on you. All yet. about the terminal. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> And so I'm going to go ahead and name this command um, motion lock. I'm going to make the command slash home slash dk slash motion lock dot sh, my script that I just created. Apply that. And normally it's control alt l to okay. log out. In fact, I could come here under wherever navigation or system or one of these. Yeah, lock screen control alt l. Oh, I'll get, yeah, right. I'll, get, I'll make this control alt shift l. And then I'll make mine. So I don't have to remember to use a different shortcut on this machine. Control Alt L. Okay. And so now, whenever I do this, it's going to run that command, mm -hmm. and I'll close this, and I'm going to pull up my phone here. Ah, uh, there we go. All right. And so, as you can see there, it's just saying that it is temporarily unavailable. So wah wah. However, if I hit Control Alt L, in fact, you can see here. The webcam light just came on. Let's scoot that over. Lights on, the screen's locked. If I move it, 
it requires my password saying, hey, dude. Ah, and okay. if I refresh this page, aha, <laughs> there is That's awesome. my mug. And it'll keep <laughs> updating as I move around. So now I can lock my screen with ease. The webcam automatically turns on. I can walk off and know that I can see if anybody comes up and tries to like ducky attack my machine or brute force it or <laughs> cold boot the RAM. How fun is that? that? Is that is so cool. I love it. It's it kind of reminds me of Prey that I used on an old Windows machine. Oh but yeah. This is even more funner. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, the only thing that I haven't like really tidied up is when you log back in, you have to remember to run stop motion. It's a uh, here. I'll cat this. It's a script here that basically just does a kill pit of motion and oh, okay. then kill the pit of uh, of page kite. I, I used awk to get it from a PS aux. But regardless. I'm sure I could find a way to have it so that I'm inter if I'm interactively with it, maybe every 30 seconds, check to see if they're running. If not, yeah. kill them. I, I don't know. Maybe the, if you guys know of a way to very easily, on unlocking the screen, run a script, that would be awesome. Um, but I'm going to start using this, because how fun is that? That's a really good idea for like when you leave your laptop at home or something like that. Yeah. You don't know if somebody's breaking in. You don't know what Starbucks you is doing to your machine. I don't know what Star Starbucks or, could be looking up kitty boomer? porn. You mean kittens on the internet. Kitten porn. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, not yeah. cool. No, it's I not. Know, I know what you're up to, Starbucks and, and Luna. What's the other one? Luna? Luna. Yeah. Bad no. kittens. Kirby's off chasing mice, actually. She caught she one the other day. Oh, nice. Did she bring it inside for you? Was yeah. she like, meow, gift, <laughs> Yes, and I was like, oh, thank you. I'm honored. Let's just put this over here, good kitty. <laughs> yeah. Here's a treat. Good job. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Okay. That's cute. Well, anyway, uh, I hope that you guys uh, like that. If you have some ideas on how we can improve upon it, again, this is just kind of proof of concept, fun stuff I've been working on. Uh, feedback at hack5.org. And we have an awesome segment coming up here from DerbyCon talking about NFC hacking and bringing that capability to older yes. phones. So stay tuned for that. But first, we're going to take a quick break.